Right then, welcome. Welcome to all our visitors, and we have one visitor at the moment, but more people could be on their way. And welcome to all the regulars. And I'm going to make an attempt now to uh, welcome our visitor personally with a sign. There we go. Good morning and welcome. So, today's notices. At the end of the service, we've got refreshments. Do please stay. Throughout the week, we've got our online daily devotions, our Bible study online. David is leading. Saturday the 14th of August, 2 till 4 p.m., we're going to be doing evangelism and outreach in Redditch. And then next Sunday, God willing, David is preaching. All are welcome. Date for the diary, Saturday the 11th of September, the Evangelism Conference. We want to see as many people there as possible. We're partnering with lots of churches and we want to win the town of Redditch for God and beyond. So please do be there and attend. Now if you've got your Bibles with you, we'll turn to Psalm 98. Psalm 98. And I'm going to read the whole psalm today. So please follow in your word. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Praise God. Now we're going to move into a time of worship. And we're going to start, the numbers are on the board. We're going to start with the uh, worship song 379. 379. Majesty. Is that yours? Stand if you're able, 379 and just
And this morning, I just want to thank you, Lord, and we all want to thank you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The next song is uh, song number 1377. Jesus be the centre. Be the fire in my heart. 
situation, whatever circumstances you may be in, this will never change, and he loves you with an everlasting love. But he loves you to such a depth, and such a height, and such a width that is beyond your comprehension. For you are loved by the Almighty. You are loved by the Creator of the world. You are loved by the Eternal God. You are loved by Him who has brought all things into being. And you are nothing without His love. You are nothing except that you know that love in your heart and in your life. And his love goes out to you. It is an abundant love. It is a love that is overflowing. It is a love that has changed. It is a love that continues to change in your life. But know this, that you are loved by him. Nothing and no one and no power, no circumstance can defeat that truth that he loves you with an everlasting love. And you can rejoice in him. You can rejoice because of his love. You can rejoice because you are the recipients of his love. And when his love becomes real to you, when his love changes you and has changed you, your life will be revolutionised. And you will know that you are loved by God for eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Love your everlasting love. Let thy grace that love to now. Speak breathing from above thou hast called me in his son. Of this pure and perfect peace. Of his transport all divine. In a love which cannot cease. I am his. And he is mine. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. We're going to turn to the Word of God now, um, Acts chapter 14. Now I've asked three readers to come up so we've got a real clarity from the actual pulpit. Um, I usually like to read round the assembly. So um, Brian, if you would read um, Acts 14, 1 to 7 please. And if you've got your Bible, follow it through. David, if I could have you uh, on standby and Jeff ready to keep the continuation. Morning. 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 Put it down. Put it down. Guys, I'm reading uh, Acts 14. Uh, we eventually found where it was. Did we, Joe? We didn't know it. Okay. We were just reading. But I told you, Paul and Barnabas were as usual in the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Gentiles believed. <coughs> Amen. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the Gentiles and pointed their minds <coughs> against the brethren. Now Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to do miraculous signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews Others with the apostles, there was a plot afoot amongst the Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Laconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach <coughs> the good news. Thank you. David, please. Acts 14, verses 8 to 20. In Lystra there sat a man crippled in his feet who was lame from birth and had never walked. 
<clears throat> Paul looking directly at him saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, stand up on your feet. At that the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw that Paul, what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, the gods have come down to <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus. And Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought <coughs> <coughs> okay, it's got a tickle. Brought bulls and reeves to the city gates because it, the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Why, men, are you doing this? <coughs> we two are only men, human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. In the past he let the nations go their own way. He has not left himself without a testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. And he provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Thank you. <coughs> And Jeff is going to read from 21 to 28. 19. Oh, 19 to 28. <laughs> <coughs> then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. They preached the good news in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Mm -hmm. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisidia, they came into Pamphylia and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. From Italia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So just before I preach, you know I'm not one to uh, tell a joke, but um, I must also welcome my mother here today as well. I did tell you for a couple of weeks that she was going to come. Um, I don't know why you're clapping. My dad did all the hard work, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, they do say I got all my, all my best looks from my dad, so uh, my mum's just here to support. But you'll see that obviously she is signing the service, so if you get bored with me, do look over into that corner. But, uh, I, did forget, I did forget to welcome my mother, so uh, very good to have you with us. So, um, the preach today is entitled, wait for it, W. W, 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 dot, dynamo. So it might sound like a, a website address. Don't try and Google it with five W's, you won't get um, too far. W, 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 dot, dynamo. 
and we'll talk about it now. So in the passage of Acts chapter 14, we see the characters Paul and Barnabas in three locations. And I'll try and pronounce them. Iconium, Lystra and Derbe, which of course is, you know, grouped together there. And Antioch in Syria, those three locations. And we identify in their ministry the good, the bad and the ugly of Christian ministry and following Jesus Christ as a disciple. We, like Paul and like Barnabas, are like coiled springs, each and every one of us, with masses of potential to share the gospel. Each one of us are dynamos. Our three locations, just for starters, our homes with our families, often the hardest place yes. to share the gospel and be a true, decent Christian believer. <coughs> We're under the microscope and often everything we do is being watched and people are on the sidelines thinking, do I want this Jesus? Do I want what these people are professing? So in the homes, in our communities, and when I say our communities, our spheres of influence, all the places that we have our reach into, maybe our, um, our streets, our workplaces, our social gatherings, etc., our communities, and our churches. So our homes, our communities, and our churches. And often, it's the hardest place to pre uh, profess a, um, a witness and a faith in Jesus Christ. Because everyone is looking in. And let's be honest, even as a church, we can be some of the most critical individuals watching and looking at each other, thinking, hmm, are they doing it right? Are they honouring God? And of course, in love, we should pull one another together and encourage one another. But how often in churches, communities and our homes, there's bitterness and there's dissension. So we are called to be, and these are the W's, witnesses, workers, worshippers, and then there's woes. And there's wonders. So I'll say those again. Witnesses, workers, worshippers, woes and wonders. There are five W's. So witnesses, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, it states, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So let us today receive that touch of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses in our homes, our churches, and our communities. In places such as Redditch, Bromsgrove, Wheelie Castle, as just some of those places represented here, Cottridge, let us receive that touch of the Holy Spirit to be faithful witnesses for Christ. And let us pray that if there's anything that would hinder that or pull us back, let us pray that God will just cut it clean and we will be faithful witnesses for him. Second W, workers. In Acts chapter 14, Paul and Barnabas they proclaim and they preach the gospel. They preach it to Jew and Gentile. And of course, to put it really simply, that is to everyone. The gospel is for everyone. Everyone and anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
That is the promise to every single person. You need to get to a place. And often it's when we've gone through hardship, turmoil and trial. When we've tried everything else. You need to get to a point when you call on the name of the Lord. And say, Jesus, I cannot do it if it's not for you. I need you to step into my situation, my life, and I give it to you. And when we do that, bang, that's when the Holy Spirit takes hold and Jesus steps into that equation. And Paul and Barnabas are mistakenly, because they're, they're active, they've got the zeal, and signs and wonders are happening, they're mistakenly associated as gods which they quickly correct and review, that they're only humans. Now let me say, some Christian workers also have this complex and this problem. And I've called it the Tigger complex. If we're all familiar with Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, he's full of energy, full of bounce, but lacking care, and compassion. He bounces in and he's got that saviour, that superman complex, super person complex, let me be PC, superhuman complex. But like Paul and Barnabas, we are mere humans, but we're filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not us, but it's the Spirit working through us. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, entitled The Great Commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This command is very simple. Therefore, go. Go with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Preach, teach and baptise in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, with the promise that God is with us and God is in us. Praise the Lord. So, we've said many times, how do we preach? We preach in our words, our actions, and our deeds. We preach in love. We teach By again being faithful witnesses and having everyone look into our Christian example, our Christian walk, and we baptise. And let me say, I've said it a few times recently, if anyone isn't baptised, get baptised. Throw that out to you. Our third W, worshippers. Now, we must be rooted in prayer and praise. And we have been in today's service. We are a people of praise, declaring God's truth in word, action and deed. We sing it out over each one of us. I mean, that hymn, And Can It Be, so rich in theology. If we were to take that hymn, and just squeeze the theology out of it like drips of an orange. Well, we'd have a a bountiful jug of orange juice, let me say that. We are to be worshippers and praise God all day long. However, fourth W, woes. In Acts 14, we read, it's not an easy life to be a Christian. It's not all clouds and unicorns and candy floss. In verse 2 we read of jealousy. And we so often see that 
around us in the disunity of exactly what we aim to be, the church. Plots in verse 6, whenever you step out and profess the gospel, you've got people at the sidelines heckling, trying to plot and scheme against you. Verse 19 to 20, the stoning and the flogging. Now thankfully, we haven't got there yet in this country, but Paul was left for dead. And verse 22, we know hardships will come, we're told that. And Paul himself imprisoned, shipwrecked, and so much more. The Christian life is never an easy life. And let me say to you, if you've got an easy Christian walk, you may want to step out and profess Jesus. You know, that's when the hardships come. And um, I don't say that lightly and I don't, you know, uh, trivialise that, but uh, the hardships come on the back of when we're stepping out and advancing and claiming ground for God. But it is a wonderful life when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. The old lifestyle is transformed, flipped on its head, and we have a new experience filled with the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it on our own. We need Jesus Christ to step in. Our final W, which very much counteracts, I think, the woes as much as uh, a relationship with Jesus obviously does. We read in Acts 14 the wonders. In verses 3 to 6, we see miracles and we know God is the miracle worker. We see the crippled man healed in verses 8 to 10. We see signs and wonders and of course, reading throughout the Gospels, we see so many, a myriad of miracles working out before us. But the critical aspect of the fellowship that we read about in Acts 14, the apostles, they prayed and they prayed earnestly. They worshipped and they prayed and they fasted. They appointed elders, godly leaders and committed them to the Lord. And I've said many a time how different the church would look in this land if people were appointed by God. And I have to be careful what I say from the pulpit there. We respect, we love our leaders and we pray for them across the land. (coughs) How different it would be if God appointed the man. Or woman, of course, you know. God appointed the person in those ministries. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, reminds us. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as they had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. It's a simple formula, if we can call it that. They came together, devoted themselves to God, shared everything amongst themselves. No one was without, uh, no one was with need. And they met together, they broke bread, Praise God, worshipped, prayed, fasted, and God 
adding to that number. Praise God. Let us pray today that God will move on each and every person here today. Let us see an inkling of the Holy Spirit just taking hold of each and every one of us, that we may be those faithful witnesses, those people that are called to be workers for the gospel, worshipping God day, uh, morning, noon and night, facing the woes, knowing that God is in the midst of the situation and experiencing the wonders of following him. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to move into a time of communion. I haven't got my normal little table out, so bear with me. And time-wise, we're oh, we're doing very well, aren't we? So communion in the normal manner. I'm going to um, obviously gel up, administer uh, the communion in the normal way, and come round to. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine themselves a person ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognising the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on themselves. Praise God. Now I'm going to come round and I'm going to administer. Um, what I'd like us to do, which is a bit different today, if we stay seated but turn to 1377 in the hymn books, and we'll just sing, Jesus be the centre as I'm going around administering. And of course, what I'm going to do as normal, um, yeah, we'll just have voices, I think, as we go around. Thank you. And um, whilst I'm administering as normal, I'm going to dip the wafer in the, um, in the, uh, the wine, non-alcoholic wine, and then administer. If you don't want it for any reason, just clearly, you know, let me pass you by. Jesus, be the center, be my soul, be my Yeah. 
Come up and tell us what the Sunday school did, please, with um, uh, Luke and Ruth. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, this Sunday, we learn about what is God like. So one day, there's this, uh, this story is taken from Exodus chapter 3, which is the Moses and the burning fire. And uh, one day when Moses was out, he saw a burning fire. And then he went to it and the, the burning fire talked to him. And then Moses asked the burning fire, who are you? And then what did, and who is that burning fire talking? God. God. And what yeah. did God say? Who are, Moses asked, who are you? And he said, God said, who I am. I am who I am. So God's reply was, I am who I am. And he's the father, uh, he's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, um, here is the word of Luke. And Ruth, it's all about burning fire. And the meaning of the burning fire, that is all, the meaning of I am who I am is, Ruth, can you read this one? God, yes. God is like the fire that did not depend on the bush in order to keep burning. So that is one meaning of I am who I am. It, God is like fire. Okay, and then yeah. another meaning of I am who I am is God had no beginning and no yeah, ending. Sure. Yeah. Yes, and the last one is He is the one who gives life to everything. Yes. So that's the meaning of I am who I am, yeah. who is our Wonderful. God. And our finally we'll end it up with yeah. our verse, memory verse, which is from. Psalm chapter 90, verse 2. Before the mountains were yeah. born, yeah. all you brought forth yeah. the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, That's you wonderful. are God. Wonderful. Amen. Yeah. That's it. Good job, Absolutely fantastic. The memory verse is well done. That is a Wonderful. So let me say to the wider church, Keep these children on their toes every time you see them. Ask them their memory verse. <laughs> we want to uh, get those biblical truths washing over our youngsters. Wonderful. And of course, as we've said before, when we then hit those woes in older, um, older life, when we're in the school playground and we might have an issue, we can remember God's truths over each and every aspect of our lives. So critical. So uh, we're very blessed to have the children's work. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Now, um, we do often uh, ask, is there anyone who would like prayer uh, at this time?
before we move into our next yes certainly so we'll come and yeah lovely so we might need you to step out of the next song in a minute because we'll come and pray for you lovely anyone else requiring prayer i'm not sure where love is because i know that he had to go to the hospital last week i think so i'm not much sure where he is today because he's normally here we know three hours in london working but uh, just one or two of my maybe need to prayer that we don't know about lovely if we could stand i'd like a couple of people to pray healing and blessing over the whole congregation and then we are going to minister in particular to those couple of needs and i'd like chris brian and david to join me when we uh, move around in that place so just generally pray god's blessing over each and every one of us please father we are family and you are the end of our family well our father and Lord, and the Father loves his children. Yeah. The Father, you love us this morning. And we love each other in Jesus. Lord, you see every need, every desire, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, emotionally. And you are God of every situation. Yeah. Father, we just try. Lord, that those who have a need, particular need, Lord, you just meet them in that area of their need and bless them. Let them know, Lord, that you've spoken to them. Let them know, Lord, that you will meet that they need you to see next. And Lord, that you will just continue, Lord, to minister to them. Minister to every one of us, Lord, this morning. Father, we thank you that, Lord, your love finds, keeps every need that we have. And Father, we just cry. Continue to bless those, Lord, and touch those in need, and bless us Hallelujah. as a family and a church of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Lord, we just pray a healing, a refreshing, and an anointing to each and every one of us in this place. We pray for every household represented, and we just pray that you will bless. Um, each and every one of us to carry that back into our homes, into our communities and into our churches. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. As the worship group comes up, we're going to minister to those couple of uh, individuals. Before we do that, can I just ask that next week, if you can remember, bring your favourite piece of fruit. What fruit do you like? Don't all bring bananas, please. Just bring a piece of fruit next week, okay? And I'd like this uh, next song over us a couple of times at least, probably twice, uh, as we initially pray and then we'll be moving into the worship with you. Uh, the offer tree, thank you, could be done now. We'll come round and collect the gifts for the church. Oh, 
history of that song and how it was penned. It was a, a Christian believer that went out onto the mission field into a, a native um, colony and he was professing the gospel to unbelievers. And when you talk about woes and God being with him, the chieftain of the um, 
the village took him aside and said, renounce Jesus or you will be put to death. And he said, no, I can't renounce Jesus. And the chief town took his uh, wife to one side and massacred his wife in front of him. And he said, no, uh, you know, I have decided to follow Jesus. I should have been more mindful of our children there. And his children were taken to one side and he was threatened with his children. And he said, although none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. And it resulted in that chap also losing his life for the gospel. Four individuals, two children, his wife and himself. But on the result of that, the wonders, the Holy Spirit touched that community in that village and they all gave their life to Christ and you know, had a worshipful community that blossomed from them. So even in the woes and the troubles of following Jesus, God is in the midst of it and God will turn it round. Didn't paraphrase that testimony very well, so do punch it into YouTube. The real story behind I have decided to follow Jesus and it will really grip you. And you can sing it along if you take your worship uh, hymn sheet with you home today. Lovely. Right, Brian, could I ask you to just close us in prayer, please? And then we're going to go into our refreshments. Father, we thank you, God, on behalf of drawing near to you. Lord, we know that we're drawing near to you and drawing near to us. Lord, it is a beautiful thing to know that we come before your throne, to be able to condemnation. And Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord, for everyone in this place, for every home, for every family. And Father, we just pray that we continue to bless us, continue, Lord, us. Continue, Lord, to use us, Lord, as witnesses for Thee. Lord, we realise that indeed the days are fast coming to an end, and Lord, the those who need to be saved. Yes. And Father, we bless us, be with us, and keep us in Your love and in Your precious things that we ask in Your name. Amen. Amen. Do stay for a tea or coffee and we'll have a time of fellowship. God bless you all. Amen.